This video will contain no spoilers for the game Xenogears, but I will be having some b-roll footage of the gameplay that I have recorded during my playthrough of the game, so if you don't want to see anything regarding the game, even if it's generally spoiler free, you can just leave this video on in the background and listen to it instead of actually watching every single clip that is in there. Just wanted to let you guys know before we get started. Hey guys, Nishquick here. And thank you guys so much for clicking on this video because, as you guys might notice, this is my first video about the game Xenogears. Xenogears is a game I played this summer, and it has now become one of my favorite video games of all time. Many of my friends who I've talked to about this game definitely know how much I love this, and this is going to be the first of many future videos I make about Xenogears, just gushing about how much I love the game, but unfortunately, this video is not going to be very happy and positive. It's actually a little bit sad. <laughs> it's gonna be talking about a potential Xenogears remake, but not in the way that you guys might expect. You guys might see the title of this video, Xenogears deserves a remake more than any other video game, and, and I totally stand by that fact. I think it deserves a remake more than any other video game in existence, but I'm unfortunately here to tell you that I don't really think it's happening. It's a big dream of mine. It is a fantasy. It is my biggest desire in this hobby of video games that I have. But I've lately had to come to the understanding and kind of have to accept that unfortunately, this probably may not happen. And if it does, I will be so over the moon because it'll be a straight up impossible dream. And I want to spark a conversation down below. What do you think about the Xenogears remake? Every time I ask someone about this game who's played it back in 1998 or is playing it now, my first question is, what is happening with this game? Why is Square Enix so, pardon my rudeness, but why are they so stupid? Why aren't they doing anything with Xenogears? And I just want to discuss this, I want to discuss the situation and get to the bottom of it maybe today. So if you guys want a Xenogears remake, if you guys are Xenogears fans, and if you just love the Xenoblade series and JRPGs in general, give this video a like, it'll help me out a ton, and subscribe for more content like this. So before we get further into this video, especially the people who don't know as much about Xenogears, I want to give you guys a little bit of a history of the development process behind this game. So Xenogears obviously is the brainchild of not only Mr. Tetsuya Takahashi, but his wife Kaori Tanaka, or better known by her pen name, Soria Saga. The concept from Xenogears started when Takahashi and Saga felt really restricted when they were working in Squaresoft and they were only delegated to work on Final Fantasy games. I remember one of them kept saying, is Final Fantasy the only game we're going to be working on? And from there, and their interest in Jungian and Freudian psychology, and Gnosticism, and Jewish mysticism all came together to sow the seeds of the early concepts of Xenogears. Many of you guys may or may not know this, but Xenogears was initially pitched as a Chrono Trigger sequel, and eventually as Final Fantasy VII. Of course, neither of those things happened, but upon developing the concept more, Square deemed Takahashi and Saga's concept to be too dark to uphold the Chrono or Final Fantasy moniker. So with Takahashi being the maverick that he is, he pushed through and garnered his own team of people who worked on prior Squaresoft masterpieces like Masato Kato who worked on Chrono Trigger, Yasunori Mitsuda who also worked on Chrono Trigger, and other people within the company like Yasuyuki Hone, who went on to become a legendary developer and designer within Monolith Soft. This team would come together under Takahashi, and Takahashi would take up his first directorial debut and helm the direction of Xenogears. Xenogears had a very, very troubled development process. Of course, Takahashi and his team were struggling due to a limited budget and a limited time when it came to developing this expansive game. And not only that, but Takahashi 
was very, very ambitious when it came to telling the story and presenting it in such a grand way. Because of his overambition and because of many development constraints and, and them having to release the game within a two-year development cycle, many corners had to be cut and unfortunately, the second half of the game was significantly reduced when it came to gameplay, dungeons, dialogue, and of course the story had to be really, really rushed in this disc 2 of Xenogears. Not only that, but many developers were in very bad shape and really pushed themselves beyond limits, even namely the composer Yasunori Mitsuda, whose OST was absolutely phenomenal, I still love it, but you can notice that there weren't as many songs written for this game that could have been and many songs were really recycled later on in disc 2. And of course, notoriously, obviously, the legendary Richard Honeywood, who was the sole localizer for the entirety of the entire Xenogears game. There are many mistakes and many hitches within the translation and localization, but it is an absolute marvel that Richard Honeywood was able to localize the entire game, both discs, and burn the master copy and finish this process while even risking his own personal and religious lifestyle to work on such a controversial game at that time. There were so many factors working against Xenogears, the time, the money, the ambition, the team, the scope of the game, Square Enix's other prioritization of Final Fantasy games, Final Fantasy VIII, Spirits Within, and all these things just boiled up within Takahashi and then him and his team obviously left and started Monolith Soft. But how does this lead back to a sequel? Well, you see, all of these hitches in development, of course, the OST, the significantly shortened Disc 2, which hardly has any dungeons, hardly has any combat encounters, it's almost like a visual novel. And of course, the messy translation and localization by the one sole localizer, Richard Honeywood. A lot of these make the game a little bit rough around the edges. Many people find it hard to get into Xenogears because of so many of these problems that are within the game. And because of this, it's almost seen as a very fragmented, very broken, very fractured and straight up incomplete game. To me, Xenogears is still a masterpiece. It still tells a story from beginning to end, and the way it tells it is very beautiful and very impactful to me personally. But I cannot deny that the game did feel incomplete. Disc 2 felt very rushed, and there are many opportunities within Disc 1 and Disc 2 that I felt like could be reworked, could be expanded, could be worked on a little more to smooth out the edges. And I see many other games coming out getting remakes and other games which are rumored to be getting remakes. And I say to myself, well, all of these games are complete. All of these games had their beginning, middle, and end. All of these games had their time to shine. And all of these games sold so much better and had so much more of a popularity push behind them than Xenogears. Well, Xenogears obviously did sell well for a PS1 RPG back then, but I think about it now. Xenogears deserves this remake. It deserves to have Disc 2 fully developed from beginning to end with all the missing dungeons. It deserves to have beautiful, enriching dialogue, which it does have. Richard Honeywood did a fantastic job with what he had given to him, but imagine if it was just cleaned up a little nicer. Think about that. Imagine if the game had voice acting. I just, I, I have so many like aspirations and dreams of who could be voicing Faye, Ellie, Satan, Bart, all of these characters. It's just a beautiful dream of mine. And think about Yasunori Mitsuda coming back, rearranging some of the songs, remastering them, and maybe even writing more songs. Like, what if we get Choo Choo's battle theme instead of having to reuse Maria's battle theme in that one iconic Choo Choo scene? Just think about all these amazing things that could happen with a Xenogears remake. And those are just 
a few things that I have in my wish list for a Xenogears remake. But I think in the future I might make a dedicated video about my full wish list for Xenogears remake because as I was playing the game, I had many observations of things that could be updated and things that could be changed. So possibly be on the lookout for that. But now I want to get into the reason why this is kind of an impossible dream as I mentioned earlier in this video and how unfortunately it has kind of come to that. First of all, Takahashi is now working with Nintendo. Obviously, we know that. Monolith Soft is a first-party development studio with Nintendo, and they're making the Xenoblade Chronicles games, and they're more successful than they've ever been before when they're with Squaresoft, or when they're with Bandai Namco when they're doing Xenosaga and Botan Kaidos. Xenoblade Chronicles is the most successful the Xeno series has ever been. And I won't get into this too much, but we can sort of see that Bandai Namco and Monolith Soft are on better terms now, because we're seeing a lot more Xeno Saga representation within the Xenoblade Chronicles series. We saw it in Xenoblade 2, and then we saw it very prominently in Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Future Redeemed. But as many of you guys might know, Square Enix now still owns the IP of Xenogears. And they're just sitting on it. And what have we been getting? Well, we've been getting a lot of merch. You guys might have seen in my last video that I made about my frustrations at Square Enix. Square Enix is just giving us a whole bunch of Xenogears merch. Well, we got these nice gear replica models, which look really cool. I might want to get one of these one day, but it's not a game. It's not a remake, it's just merch. And then they're selling these Xenogears watches. Who's this for? And are they doing this to gauge interest in a Xenogears remake, or are they just being very petty since they still own the IP? I don't really know, but this is, of course, yet again, not a Xenogears remake. This is nothing relating to a video game. We've also been seeing them gradually posting the entire Xenogears OST on their YouTube channel, and if you look at the comments, so many people are clamoring for a Xenogears remake. We want a remake, when are we getting a remake? Well, we'd love to see this game get remade. So, Square knows that we're interested in this. Square Enix knows that we want something like this, but my question is, is this ever going to happen? You see, Takahashi is the one who created this game. Takahashi and Soraya Saga. It is their game. So my point is, if Xenogears is coming back under Square Enix, how is Tetsuya Takahashi going to factor into this? Many fans of Xenogears, like myself, would be very hesitant if Square Enix comes out and says, Xenogears Remake, here it is, here's how it looks, here's how it plays, and if Takahashi and Saga aren't involved in it, at least as consultants, a lot of us are going to be a little bit hesitant about how the direction of this game is going to go. Like, what I said before is one of my biggest wishes, and if this Xenogears Remake ever happens, one of the priorities and basically one of the requirements is that Disc 2 is fully developed as a full-on game, so that second half of the game doesn't feel like a rushed visual novel. It feels like a full game with a developed and nicely well-designed and written scenario. And I don't know if I trust Square Enix to do that. Even if whoever they got on board is the biggest Xenogears fan, in the end, they're not Tetsuya Takahashi, they're not Kaori Tanaka. So I would really want those two to be involved in this remake in some way or the other, but the unfortunate reality is Soraya Saga isn't really involved in game development anymore ever since Soma Bringer and Xeno Saga, and she's been involved a little bit with Xenoblade 1 and 2, but not to the extent that she was with Xenogears and the early Xeno Saga games. And of course, Takahashi is so busy with so many projects at Nintendo, like, of course, Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition got announced, he's not maybe directly involved in something like that, but he's overseeing so many projects. He's already hiring actively for his next 
major project that he is directing, which is probably going to be the next game in the Xeno series, maybe even Xenoblade Chronicles 4. So does he have time to go to the Square Enix office once a week just to consult and supervise a Xenogears remake? Maybe, he's a very driven man and he's very busy and he's got a lot of things on his plate, but I don't know if that's a priority and I don't know if Nintendo wants him to do something like that. I don't know if Nintendo wants one of their big, high profile developers to take time away from their game to work on a game directly with Square Enix. Well, it could work out, Nintendo and Square Enix could come to some sort of an agreement and have some like Switch exclusivity or something, but I just don't know if I see something like that happening. Another thing is Square Enix is very notorious for having very skewed expectations when it comes to green lighting projects, expecting certain return from certain projects, and they're just very weird about that. Square Enix loves to invest money in graphically intensive games, and when things don't pan out the way that they should, when they spend so much time, energy, money, manpower, development resources on a game, and the rate of return isn't good enough, then they're the ones suffering the consequences. And another thing I've noticed is, because of this, because of their massive investment into these high profile, graphically intensive games, like Final Fantasy 16, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, Forspoken, etc, etc, all these games, because they spend so much money in these games, they're a little bit more hesitant to take risks on the smaller double A games. And that's why I was very happy to see Team Asano remake titles like Live Alive and Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D. And I was even more excited to see Square Enix Greenlight, a Star Ocean 2 remake developed by the studio Gem Drops, because that's exactly how I would want a Xenogears remake to look like. But with all these weird circumstances, with it being Takahashi and Saga's brainchild, I feel like Xenogears is coupled in with Chrono Trigger as one of those games that Square Enix is just too afraid to touch. Of course, maybe they don't want to mess with Takahashi's masterpiece. Just like they're too afraid to mess up their own masterpiece, which is Chrono Trigger. But I say, give it a shot, give it a risk. Take the risk, take the plunge, ask for help if you need it, because this game, more than anything, deserves it. You see how big and popular the Xeno fandom is right now. Xeno is at its absolute peak ever since Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torn of the Golden Country, Xenoblade Definitive Edition, and Xenoblade 3 hit the Nintendo Switch. The Xenoblade series has skyrocketed in popularity and people are now so interested in playing the classic games like Xenosaga and Xenogears, but they're not available for modern systems. This is a golden opportunity for Square Enix to hop onto this, but with the way they're behaving, with investing so heavily in AAA games, with flippantly <laughs> selling Xenogears merch left and right that has no bearing on any kind of Xenogears game, and with them just not really respecting the franchise, and of course with the fact that Takahashi and Saga are not really involved with anything Square Enix anymore, it just doesn't seem likely, it doesn't seem very possible, and I'm not getting my hopes up for something like this unfortunately. Xenogears was very troubled, it had a very fractured and very turbulent development cycle and turbulent life, its legacy is still evident with games like Xenoblade 2, 3, Future Redeemed. You can see perfect works in almost every single project that Takahashi has touched following Xenogears, but I'm just very hesitant and very nervous that Xenogears is going to be stuck on the PS1 forever, and I think that's the harsh truth I'll have to live with. And the thing is, 
I always dream of one day watching a Nintendo Direct or watching a PlayStation State of Play or just any Square Enix presentation. And then I just see that Nissan Cross pendulum swing left and right. And then with a flash of white light, we see Xenogears in the art style of Star Ocean 2, the second story R, with a beautiful HD 2D look, with a beautiful remastered OST. And we hear Faye, Ellie, Satan, Bart, Margie, Rico, all these characters, we hear them talk for the first time. I always dream of a trailer like that and they say Xenogears remake releasing so and so on all platforms Nintendo Switch PlayStation PC it is a dream of mine but I don't know if it'll ever come to pass and that's just something I'll have to live with in terms of remakes like I said Square Enix has been investing in smaller AA remakes like Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3, Live Alive, Star Ocean 2, but then they're also investing on very high profile AAA games such as the Final Fantasy VII Retrilogy, which many people often say, does this even need to be happening? Does this game even need to be split into three parts? And now we have the rumor of a Final Fantasy IX remake. And I stop and think to myself, just like if you guys remember me talking about in previous videos how Xenoblade Chronicles X was a priority remaster and remake that I wanted to see from Nintendo before something like The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess and Wind Waker, because Xenoblade Chronicles X deserved that Switch effect more than Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. I think to myself, does a rumored Final Fantasy IX remake deserve to happen more than a possible potential Xenogears remake? Well, you see, to me, I played Final Fantasy IX earlier this year. It had a beginning, middle, and end. All four discs were fully developed. A giant OST full of memorable songs and iconic melodies from Nobuo Uematsu. And the game still looks timeless. It still looks amazing. And with things like the Mogiri mod, you can make your own Final Fantasy IX remake. Whereas I look at Xenogears, a fractured, fragmented game, which had a rushed disc 2, which had a rushed OST, and a rushed translated and localized script. I look at this game and I say, I can't really think of any other video game in this modern day that deserves a remake more than this game. Because you see, when it comes to game development, games are very, very, very expensive to make. And even some of your smaller AA games, it takes a lot of time, energy, manpower, resources, and money to make these games. And green lighting something like this is it's not an easy process. It's not something that development studios take lightly. So I think about all the energy, all the money, all the manpower and resources put into the Final Fantasy Re trilogy or a Final Fantasy IX remake. And then I think about all of the money and time that could have been spent in a Xenogears remake, a game that arguably needs this treatment more. What do you guys think? I, I know that's a very controversial thing to say. I know a lot of us are really enjoying the re-trilogy, and a lot of us are very excited for a Final Fantasy IX remake, but I think of all of the decisions that Square Enix is making, and all of these decisions are going against a remake of a game that is sitting in their back catalog that really, truly, really seriously needs it. And I'm gonna hit you guys with the harshest truth right now. On top of all of these reasons that I just gave, who in Square Enix is going to champion for a Xenogears remake when so many other games like Final Fantasy 7 and 9 and so many of these other games are going to probably sell more in the eyes of Square Enix? Who's gonna be championing for a Xenogears remake? Are there any people, 
any veterans from Takahashi's original team, the only person I can really think of is Tetsuya Nomura, who's incredibly busy with the re-trilogy and Kingdom Hearts. If there's anyone else I'm missing, and anyone else who was still part of the Xenogears development back then, let me know, but I honestly can't think of anyone currently at Square Enix who'd be championing for a remake like this and who'd be heading this project as a producer and a director and directly funding something like this within Square Enix. And many of you might say, well, how important is the legacy of Xenogears aside from Xenoblade Chronicles? Like I just said, perfect works can be seen in all Xeno titles. The legacy of Xenogears can be seen in every single game that Takahashi has worked on. But it can be seen in even the Final Fantasy games. Like I said before, Xenogears was going to be Final Fantasy VII before Square deemed it too much of a dark game because of all the religious undertones and the Jungian and Freudian psychology. But you see Cloud's arc in Final Fantasy VII. You see Sephiroth as a villain in Final Fantasy VII. You see a lot of the themes that Final Fantasy VII is trying to do. There's so many things that scream Xenogears in Final Fantasy VII. And it's all because of Takahashi and Saga's influence on Square Enix in their storytelling and how impactful Xenogears was during that time in the late 90s. But I guess that's enough rambling. That's enough doom and gloom for today. I don't usually get this pessimistic in my videos, but this is the reality that I see. I guess maybe I'm not really pessimistic, I'm just being a little bit realistic and I'm not getting my hopes up. Because like I said, I have that dream of that Nintendo Direct trailer one day and if I see it, I will, I will just be so happy because this game means so much to me and I can't wait to tell you guys more about this game and I can't wait for a lot of you guys to play this game. I know a lot of my friends on Discord, some of my mutuals on Twitter, and even some of the people in my YouTube comment section have went out of their way to tell me like, hey, I'm gonna play Xenogears. Like, Nishquick, you've made me want to play Xenogears, and I'm very excited for you guys. There's so many great ways to play this game today. I always tell people to look into the Perfect Works build. They're doing some amazing work with this game, and that's how I played the game. And it felt like a really great polished remaster of Xenogears, and I really enjoyed my playthrough. It has a nice, really good translated script, which fixes some of the awkwardness and fixes some of the grammatical errors, so the game and the text make sense. And it also fixes some of the balancing and the combat and stuff, so it feels like a genuinely good remaster of Xenogears. But in my mind, in my heart, I'm still going to be dreaming. I'm still going to be pining for that Xenogears remake. So let me know in the comments below what you feel about Xenogears. Do you think it deserves a remake? Which other game, if not Xenogears, deserves a remake more than Xenogears? Because I'm very curious to hear that. If there's a game that deserves it more than Xenogears, I would like to know what it would be in the comments below. And if you are thinking of playing Xenogears for the first time, let me know what you're most excited to experience in this masterpiece of a game. I'm excited for you guys to play it in however way you can. And I just want to close out by saying, if you want to play this game, play it now. Play it as soon as you can. Don't wait on a remake because I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but I still want everyone to experience one of the greatest stories ever told in video games. So yeah, and like always, give this video a like and subscribe for more content just like this if you enjoyed what you heard today. This is Quick signing off. Have a great day and go play some great games today. Like a Xeno game. There's so many on the Switch. So just play a Xeno Big Chronicles game. I'll see you guys in the next one later. Hey guys, this is Nishquick. Thank you so much for watching that video. And if you enjoyed it, check out these two videos on the left and maybe subscribe if you haven't on your way out. And big shout out to all my channel members whose names you can see on the screen right now. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.